Astro Nier originally came out back in 2019 for Windows and Xbox One and sees its Nintendo Switch launch on January the 13th, aka today. Developed by System Era Softworks, and it's a good example of a very small team of friends working together trying to differentiate themselves from the likes of Minecraft. The story isn't without tragedy either, with co-founder and lead artist Paul Papera unfortunately passing away on March 27th of 2017 and he never got to see the official release of the game. Well, what I can say is I think he would be more than pleased with the way it's shaped up on Nintendo Switch. Is it the star attraction or just a constellation prize? Ouch. <laughs> Let's find out. The narrative of Astroneer is created very much by the player's own experiences. You initially drop upon an alien planet and step out for the first time on an unfamiliar world. As the title can be played solo or with a group of friends, your personal narrative experience will vary. There are, however, a number of mysteries hidden within the game. You'll find ancient monoliths, hidden research items, and may even find yourself on a journey to the planet's very core. What you won't find, though, is an overarching curated storyline, but you'll definitely have tales to tell. As as far as gameplay and controls go, you control your character from the third person perspective. Before you begin the game, you have a few customization options, allowing you to change the spacesuit and helmet design, as well as some of your colors. As you complete tasks within game, you'll unlock more of these options, and there is also an optional cosmetics store from the main menu. This allows you to spend real world currency to purchase new items and gear. Not something I'm particularly fond of in a paid experience, but they're things which are in addition to what you already unlock within the game, which is something at least. Once you've decided upon what you want to do, you'll choose your playstyle. Default being survival, with a creative mode unlocking absolutely everything in the game and allowing you the freedom to simply build and explore. For me though, it's all about survival, and as you drop into the first planet, you realise just how alone you are. You're given a few basic starter base items and a notice board for choosing different missions. Now the mission board is very important, although there are some tutorial elements to the game, it's designed to teach you as you play, each mission granting you a new reward but gradually introducing you to the new mechanics. The key one of those, and one you'll learn very quickly is the need for oxygen. You learn early on how to produce tethers. These allow you to connect up to your main oxygenator, which you're given at the start of the game, and you'll drop these breadcrumbs style as you explore the planet's surface. The quantity of them is finite though, so you will need to create your own. And one particularly clever aspect of Astroneer's design is the lack of a HUD. In fact, you'll find most of these elements upon your backpack, with the oxygen meter, for example, shown up here, and the capacity or life of a battery is shown directly upon it. Now, every player's backpack is also an important part of the game. It's from here that you'll use your small printer to create personal items, such as battery packs, power stations, and those all important tethers. To make them though, you'll require resources. These are scattered all over the planet, both above and below its deformable terrain. And when you discover a new resource, you'll be excavating it using your terrain tool. Modifications to this can be attached directly to it. And the same goes for your backpack. If you find a jetpack, this can be clipped right onto the side. As well as acquiring resources when you're excavating, if you have the required receptacle, you'll also gain some soil, allowing you to switch modes on your terrain tool and then rebuild. This can be great for making bridges. Or for when you accidentally slide down into that bottomless cavern, you're way too far from your oxygen and you're desperate to try and get out again. Unfortunately, in this instance, well, I died. Death within Astroneer isn't very punishing at all. You're simply returned to the oxygenator, and once you return to your body, you can then get back all your gear. With such a minimal HUD, you might be wondering how you navigate in this world. Well, there are a number of ways. First and foremost, you have the compass. This will point you in the right direction to your next objective, if indeed you have one. And once you've unlocked beacons and started placing your own, it can be very useful as a quick way of navigating backwards and forwards. Astroneer doesn't just take place on foot. You'll unlock a few different vehicles, all of which you'll need to power, and how you do that will evolve throughout the game. Depending on how lucky you are, you might early on find some form of wind turbine, but just as important as generating energy is storing it. So the creation of small, medium, and large power cells and batteries are of equal importance. As you'd expect, crafting and base building play a large part in the game. Rather than a workbench though, you're creating printers, beginning with small, moving on to medium and large, and these allow you to create more and more complex items. Base building has a modular feel to it, with everything needing to be interconnected. 
initially literally tethered together to give things power. As you branch out into the world though, you'll find ways of creating power whilst out and about, and in turn setting up your own outposts. Now unfortunately, in the pre-release period, there's no one else online to play with, but I can only imagine that it's going to be much more enjoyable with friends online. Having said that, I have experienced a few slight quirks with the online nature of the game. If you have it set to online rather than local, if you leave the experience in handheld and then return, it tends to lock up for a while, asking you if you want to reconnect. A minor irritation, but worth noting if you're only planning on playing solo. Astroneer is going to suit a certain type of player. If you're someone that requires a strong reason or designed intent in your gameplay experiences, then this isn't going to be for you. For me personally though, it's the exploration which really elevates this one. Not only are there many hidden items and things to find in the world, but I found the mission board and reward system kept me engaged. And the biggest obstacle to my progression were the environments themselves. I didn't have to panic about different animals or creatures, as there simply aren't any. You might find the occasional toxic plant, but they're easy enough to avoid. It was my own curiosity that ended up getting the better of me most of the time, as I ventured just that little bit too far when I was out of tethers, or I pushed just a bit further into that cave and ended up falling down to an area where I couldn't get back and would die of suffocation. I don't see these as negatives. The fact that the game makes you want to explore and that it allows you to build up enough to then move to other planets, it overcomes one of the biggest hurdles of such experiences and that being purpose. I never felt aimless within Astroneer. As far as controls and movement go, it certainly isn't as precise as using a PC. Holding a trigger and then manually moving the cursor to attach power points or move items in and out of your inventory will never feel as precise on a console, but it helps that there's an element of magnetism to some of the things you have to interact with, making the more fiddly movements much easier. I had no issue with character control and sprinting around was easy enough as well as jumping and using the boosters. The same goes for vehicle controls triggers to accelerate and brake, and then moving with the left stick. Overall, I've had a lovely time revisiting Astroneer. They've added in quite a lot of new gameplay elements, and if you're a new player to the game, I would suggest potentially following a small guide on YouTube. Although you have the pre-drawn tutorial screens, there are still times where that little bit of extra information come in useful. I think it will be even better when we can get some people online. However, it can feel slightly confusing at times, particularly in the earlier stages, and I give gameplay 17 out of 20. Controls are about as good as they can be on a console, meaning they're okay, but sometimes fiddly. They score 15 out of 20. Onto visuals, performance and audio then. Visually, Astroneer looks great. Everything's bright, colourful and charming, and the artists clearly achieve their goal of differentiating themselves from Minecraft. This one has an entirely unique feel. The deformable terrain tool works well, and as far as environmental manipulation and base creation, Astroneer is much faster than its peers. Although the game does suffer from popping, it's as if the world grows around you as you move. And strangely, the way it's been implemented here, in my opinion, it doesn't really look bad, it almost ties in to that visual style. See what you think. It feels more intentional than simply just trying to scratch back some performance, as the game runs reasonably well. You will notice the occasional stutter, but I didn't experience any crashes, and the fact that you can record footage in handheld is a surefire way of seeing if they had any headroom. Although there's no text size option within the game, the fact that it uses such a minimal HUD system, the only real text you'll be reading are the missions, and these are nice and clear and easy to read. In handheld, the performance was ever so slightly lower, but still maintains a good pace overall, even when digging your way through the terrain. I'm pretty impressed and it looks like the game's running at native resolution, which is even more impressive on Switch. It is Unreal Engine 4, so perhaps they're using some dynamic resolution scaling, but I didn't notice it, I've got to be honest. Now, I mentioned in the gameplay segment one small bug I experienced. If you're playing in handheld and then move locations and then restart the game or go back to it, you might notice this disconnected screen and sometimes you can get stuck for a long time and then about a minute or so later, suddenly the game would be responsive again. I'm sure it's something they can fix. One area Astroneer has no issues though are in the audio department. The game has a 26 track OST, and there are some fantastically atmospheric tracks here. It's just perfect for sci-fi and exploration. Your characters do have certain sounds tied to emotes, but there's no audio as far as voice acting goes. Overall, I give the visuals and performance 16 out of 20, and the audio scores 18 out of 20. 
Astroneer is going to set you back £23.74 digitally or £34.99 physically, with the latter releasing on February the 18th of 2020. The game has a really reasonable download size of 1.7 gigs and it's single player only per console, although you can link up consoles using LAN play or play online with up to four players. Sandbox games are very difficult to put a value on, but I think it's one time where it's fair to compare it to its nearest rival, that being Minecraft, which is about £4 cheaper than Astroneer. Had I been in charge of publishing this, I would have gone for the same price. What that doesn't change though is just how nice of an experience Astroneer provides on the Nintendo Switch. Not only does it look and sound great, there's so much to do here, and it's a better fit, in my opinion, for a slightly older player. There are some more complex systems. The exploration feels a tad more rewarding, and space. <laughs> space is awesome. With all that said, I would have liked it to be a few pounds cheaper. Overall, I give value 17 out of 20. Astroneer is a thoroughly enjoyable space sandbox. It currently has a few quirks that need ironing out, and by its very nature it requires more of the player in terms of motivating their own experience, but the performance and visual are far better than I thought they would be. If you can find a group of friends to join you for this one, and if you can't, maybe go check out our Discord, there's a lot to discover and do. Astroneer gets a switch up score, of 83%. Let me know in the comments if this is one you're interested in, have you been waiting for it, and will you be picking it up? Thanks to all of you that enjoy the channel, especially to our patrons, you guys support us every single month and we really do appreciate it. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!